In this GSD Show Talk episode, Mike Arce and his team fly to Chicago to speak at the Perform Better Summit on Fitness Studio Marketing Mastery. In this episode, he's literally sharing some of the exact strategies that leading fitness marketing agency Loud Rumor uses to run campaigns for over 40 top fitness studio franchises across the world, such as Orange Theory Fitness, F45, IMX Pilates, and many more. He's teaching you how to write ad-winning copy, script top converting video ads, how to A-B test, how to create great marketing funnels, and how they all work together. Enjoy this talk without having to fly to Chicago. And if you're listening to this episode, you're going to get a ton from most of Mike's talk. But if you tune into the actual video version of this episode, you'll be able to actually see the ads and videos so you can best emulate them for your business. Without further ado, Mike Arce on Fitness Marketing Mastery. Want to get inside access to the ad campaigns that have been used by some of the most successful fitness studio brands from all over the world? The ads they've used, the landing pages, texts, emails, videos, what their prospect journey looks like? All of that is available now in LRVT, which stands for Loud Rumor Virtual Training. Whether you're a rookie in the advertising game or a seasoned professional, LRVT is designed to help you and your team advertise like the best fitness studios on the planet. Each training is well produced, thorough, and based on proven campaigns that we've ran successfully over and over again. You'll also be a member of our community where you can ask questions and get support from our team as well as the many other studio owners that we work with. To get started, go to loudrumorvt.com. Again, that's loudrumorvt.com. Built and designed for the fitness industry, MyZone was created to turn your club into a socially connected hub while providing accurate data that your members can trust. MyZone amplifies the group exercise experience. It provides valuable data for personal training departments with built-in challenges, personal goals, gamification, and an online social community. Users are motivated to sustain physical activity through a fun, engaging, and inclusive platform. Represented in over 6,000 facilities in 65 plus countries and translated into 19 languages, MyZone is used by health and fitness clubs, corporate wellness sites, educational establishments, or anyone wanting to track their physical activity. To learn more about how you can gamify your club in a way that will make your users love you for it, visit www.myzone.org or email salesusa at myzone.org. Simple targeting through Facebook ads. Cool thing about Facebook, I think the thing that makes it like the Achilles, right, the superhero type uh, Goliath of a marketing platform is it's targeting. You can say, I wanna go after people that are uh, women, that are between 25 and 55, that are within five miles of my studio, and that like to show the biggest loser, that like Dr. Uh, Dr. Oz, that um, are looking to lose weight, and that um, like running. And that's like the most exact person that I want to work in my business, to work out of my business. Would you guys agree? That's a cool thing. The problem is the same thing that makes it the Achilles and a local marketing level, meaning you guys are probably targeting people within five to seven miles of your location, right? I mean, that's the most ideal. Obviously you have people that are probably coming from further, but that's the easiest to target, right? Five to seven miles. But for local businesses, it's also the Achilles heel. It's a thing that'll actually mess up your campaigns. We need to actually let Facebook's algorithm do the majority of the work and we just do the first few parameters. So I'll tell you what I mean. The only thing that you need to actually focus on is these three targeting metrics and that's it. Number one, location. Location is gonna be different for everyone, okay? Depending on where you're at. I'll give you an example. Generally, across a platform, the 1400 businesses we work with in this fitness space, generally we're looking at like five miles. Meaning that if your location is here, anybody in a five mile radius is a good target to go after, okay? Now, in some cases, you may also go after like a zip code that's pretty close to you because you know there's nothing else around there and you can get that business and it's a good, good zip code. Also, if you live like where I live, I live kind of like by the lake in the mountain area. And so over there, you have to kind of drive to get into places. So like going six, seven, eight miles is normal. So knowing that terrain, maybe where you're at, going six, seven, eight miles is good because you got a lot of lake or you got a lot of mountains or desert and it's normal for people to drive. If you live in a place like Manhattan, you never go more than one mile. I mean, it takes an hour just to go two, right? So you, people wanna be able to get to a place that they can walk to very, very quickly. And in a mile in Manhattan, you can get a million people that fit the demographic, okay? So that's number one, location. Number two is gender. Now, how many of you guys train both men and women? Raise your hands proudly, yes? Men and women. How many of you guys just train one gender? Okay, 
So with that, you probably want both. Here's the thing, target women. If you target women, there's a few things you need to know about this. Number one, you will get more leads, four times more at the same cost. What that means is if let's say you spend $400 in ads to generate 100 female leads, you would have only generated 25 male leads with that same $400. Okay. Now you go, yeah, but now I'm only going to have women. No, you're not for a couple of reasons. Number one, where women will go, men will find them. Number one, number two, women are more likely to bring in their spouse than men are. Number three, women are more likely to bring in guy friends than guys are more likely to bring in guy friends or girlfriends. Okay. And number four, there's a lot of cool activities you could do where if you did like a couple's day or something like that, women are more likely to get their husbands to come than husbands are more likely to get their uh, women to come. Does that make sense? Yep. So you, females are just a better target. And at the end of the day, would you agree money is what pays the bills and green is green. And if you have a ratio of like 70 to 80, like at the end of the day, if business is growing, people are getting paid, you're paying your bills, you're doing the stuff you want to do in life. Like, does it matter if you're 70, 80% women? Does it matter? I mean, if it does, then that's, you got to question that stuff and decide on what you need to do here. But if it's about growing the business, keeping your employees happy, keeping them growing their careers, being able to add new things to the business and getting your people in shape and making money along the way, then it doesn't really matter. Women. Okay. And the third thing is age. So with age, that's it. Those are the only three metrics. You don't go anything past that. Now for age, generally, just like location, generally it's 25 to 55. However, you do have to know your demographic. Now, a lot of people want to target millennials or now it's gen. What's the next one? Gen Z is it Gen Z. I think that's what it is. A lot of people want to target young people. And when you do inside the box thinking, it makes a lot of sense, right? Cause you go, man, the younger they are, the longer they'll be with us or the, yeah, cause the younger they are, the longer they'll be with us. Cause they're not going to die for a while. If I get somebody that's older, well, I may only have them for a few years. It's a weird way to think, but the truth is that's the way a lot of people think. But now let's go outside the box thinking. Here are the stats that we've got. Cause we work with a lot of studios. The average studio has reta retention rate issues in general, but 18 to 24 has a three month retention rate. 25 to 34 has a seven month retention rate. 35 to 44 has an 11 month retention rate and 45 up has a 14 plus month retention rate. Meaning you will retain people that are 45 and up for way longer than you will retain somebody that's 21 years old or 26 years old or 31 years old. Would you guys agree with that? With what you've seen in your own business? Raise your hands if yes. Okay. So, Young people like to mix things up. They like to keep things fresh. They like to go to the new bars. Uh, McKenna and I were talking about Old Town Scottsdale in Arizona. The same group owns Old Town Scottsdale. It's called the OTG. They own the same, they, they own all the, 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 the best spots to go to, the clubs, the nightclubs, bars, all that. They don't remodel like most businesses do and go, okay, cool. Let's do some new stuff. Let's put a new bar here and let's put a new speaker set here. And let's do this. They don't do that. They shut down the bar and they reopen it with a whole new concept because they know that people at that age are more likely to want to go to a new place than the same place that was just remodeled. The older demographic likes to go to the same place that was remodeled and not a new place. So now you want to make sure you show them a compelling offer. So a lot of people are afraid to do offers for a couple of reasons. Number one, they feel like it devalues their service. I don't want to give anything away for free. It devalues our service. It devalues our service. Well, here's the deal. If you have a really great service that's so devalu like so worthy of not being devalued, if you have such a great service, then why wouldn't you let people have a free sample and see what it's like? Because if it's that good, what are they probably going to do? Buy it. Now, if they don't buy it, what does that probably tell you about your product? It's not as good as you think. And maybe it needs to be a little devalued so you can go ahead and start working on it. Okay. So showing a compelling offer, the best businesses, studios, franchise we work with. I don't care if you're orange steer, if you're F45, if you're Spenga, if you're cycle bar, whoever, they're all giving away free stuff, free week, free, free session, free two sessions. I've had people to give away free months. Here's the thing. The people with the best process give away the most sales process. The people with the best sales process, the best sales experience give away the most, the people with the worst, they don't want to give away anything. Now they don't know that. Of course, zero people think they have a bad sales process. Everybody thinks they sell really well. In fact, the people that believe they sell the best that actually sell the worst usually get the most referrals. So I'll give you an example. Raise your hands. If you would say a good portion of your members and clients came from member referrals, raise your hands high, keep them high. Okay. How many of you say almost all of them came from members and referrals? Raise your hands high. Okay. So now it doesn't mean you're a bad salesperson. 
but it definitely doesn't mean you're a good one. Doesn't mean you're bad, doesn't mean you're good. What it means is you're good at what you do, so you get people to actually wanna refer more business to you. But it doesn't say anything about your salesmanship because at the end of the day, a referral is a layup, right? Professional basketball players, if they miss a layup, it's kind of like, how'd you miss a layup? It's weird. It's almost like, like the crowd goes weird, like wild, right? They're like, whoa, like if you miss a layup. If you miss a three-pointer, it's normal. In fact, the best in the world only miss, they miss half of them. They miss 50%, right? A digital lead, meaning through marketing, is not gonna have anywhere near the same closing ratio as a member referral. The member referral was sold for you. All you had to do was take the order. You never made a sale, you took an order. The sale was made by the member that referred them because they already knew the price, they already knew the schedule, they already knew how it worked, they already told them how it went, they already said, come with me, you should come, you should come, they should did all the selling. All you've gotta do is not mess it up. And if you didn't make a sale, if you say I closed nine out of 10 referrals, well then you got some sales work to do because I don't know how you missed one, right? They're sold already. Now with internet leads, the average studio across all of our students we work with, I don't care if they're the best, the worst, the average is 10%. That means if you get 100 leads, you get 10 members out of it. The best that we work with close 25 to 35%. The worst, what do you think they close at? I don't know, the leads aren't good. What do you mean, they're real people. It's not like a, I didn't hand you a, like, a, a messed up handkerchief or a tissue. Like it's not a, it's not a broken remote. It's a real human being. Would you agree that most human beings want to be in better shape? Raise your hands if yes. Regardless of the shape they're in, would you agree they want to be in better shape? Have you ever met anybody, regardless of the shape they're in, that goes, man, I just can't get in worse shape. This sucks. I, I'm eating donuts. I'm doing everything I can. Do, have you ever met that guy or girl? No. Everyone wants to be in better shape. This is a real life human being. So the lead doesn't suck if they filled out a form if they were targeted, meaning they fit all that stuff, they walked into the studio and they're here and they're talking to you and you can't close them. Does that mean that he, this, this lead sucks, meaning a human that doesn't, for some reason doesn't want to get in shape? Or does that mean that there's probably some work to do on the sales side? At the end of the day, everyone really wants to get in shape. We just need to, number one, get them in the door and have a really great sales process. Some of the best in the world that I work with, they do sales training every single day. Training just like fitness is not done once. Training is ongoing. It's not a project, it's a process. Athletes, NBA athletes right now, they all know how to do layups. Would you agree? But would you agree, if, like, would you, would you agree if I told you that there's not a practice that an NBA player goes, goes through where a layup is not part of the process? Every practice, they're doing at least some layups. That's ongoing. They know how to do a layup. It doesn't matter. Your people, oh, I, I already know how to sell it. I already know how to close. I already know how to present pricing. I already know how to overcome that objection. I already know how to, how, to, how to confirm the appointment. I already know how to set the appointment. I already know how to get them started in class. I already know how to hand them off to the next person. I already know how to do that. It doesn't matter. Are you practicing it every day so you can do it every time the same way? And role playing doesn't have to be crazy where it's like an hour long. It could be like, let's say you're my, how many people you have on your team? 12 people on your team. So if we're in our meeting, 15 minutes. All right, guys, so today we're gonna do some quick role playing. Hey, really quick, I gotta talk to my husband. He's gotta give it back to me, the exact way it's written in a script, right? He says it, let's say he says it wrong. Nope, who's got it, who's got it? Yes, go, gotta talk to my husband. You give it to me. Nope, who's got it, who's got it? Gotta talk to my husband, yes. Perfect, go ahead and say it again. Perfect, okay, you think you got it now? Let's do it, go ahead. I gotta talk to my husband. Yes, guys, I need you to have that by the next time. Okay, really quick. I just don't know if I can, I can afford it. Go. No. Go. You see what I'm saying? It doesn't have to be this thing. 10, 15 minutes per day. Get your team fired up. Get your team warmed up with it. Would you agree if you did that every single day a year from now, you would have a much different result from your team? Yes or no? Raise your hand if you agree you would have a very different looking and performing team a year from now if that was done every day. Okay. So I want you guys to start implementing that because if you're spending money in marketing, which is really just the throw, you should also spend money in sales, which is the catch. Oh, but I want the marketing to close themselves. That's like saying, I want Tom Brady to just catch everything too. I, I don't care if they're eighth graders out there. I want Tom Brady. Tom Brady's not throwing to eighth graders. Tom Brady's throwing to professional wide receivers. So it doesn't matter how good Tom Brady is, the receiver needs to be really good too. It doesn't matter how good the marketing is, the sales needs to be really good too. Match with a real video or image. So people go to Facebook not to see a commercial, just like they go to TV not to watch commercials, unless you're me. I actually like watching commercials because it's my, it's my world, right? But people don't want to watch commercials. Raise your hand if you're flipping through channels. Within a second, you could tell you're watching a commercial and you know if you could flip it or not. Raise your hands if you know a commercial within a second. 
OK. So people go on there to see their friend stuff, their family stuff, all the stuff of the people they follow, organic stuff. That's what they want. You want to blend in to stand out. OK? You want your stuff to be as organic as possible. Now, is it cool to have some good videos too? Yes, for branding, it's really good. But also mix that in with some organic stuff, whether it's gifts, whether it's just your studio owners telling them to swipe up on Instagram stories, whatever it is, use actual organic stuff because it works really, really well. You want to blend in to stand out. Oh, another thing that's very important too, because I was actually talking about this to the studio I was visiting this morning. You want to make sure you know your target. If you're targeting people that are in their 40s, that are typically moms that want to get in shape because they're done having kids and they want to get into better shape. You don't want to have 20 year olds in bikinis. I'm sure that's pretty much common sense, but common sense is not so common. So I want to make sure you at least knew it before I moved on. Okay, next, good copy, just selling the offer. Here's what I mean by just selling the offer. Too many times I see people selling their entire program in their marketing. You don't sell the program in the marketing, you sell the offer in the marketing, and then when they get in the studio, that's when you sell them the actual program. So people are talking too much. Yeah, we do this, we do that, we do this, we do that, and it's overwhelming, and it's a lot, and it's hard to understand. You understand it because it's your business and you took time planning it out, but a lot of times, how many of you guys have looked at a business before that you just don't get? Like you look at me, you're like, I, I don't really know what you do. Raise your hands, whether it's a friend's company, right? They, but how many of you would agree that they know very well and very clear what they do? Well, that's sometimes how it is for your members. Remember, we're fitness enthusiasts and we study this and we look at what other people are doing. So for us, we feel like we could just look at a studio and get the concept within a second. But for your regular members, they're like, what do you do, yoga, spin, and strength, right? Like, uh, okay, how does that work? Is it all in one? Is it So what happens is, Sometimes we start selling everything in the ad, in the marketing, when in reality, you wanna just sell the offer. Just get them in. Hey, it's a free week, and I'm gonna actually, let me, let me break it down right here. So these are the six things that you wanna have in your marketing. Specificity, exclusivity, scarcity, rarity, popularity, urgency. I'll give you the examples of those. Specificity, attention women, uh, attention ladies in Elmhurst, right? Exclusivity, we are offering you, right, just for them. Scarcity, 50 passes or 30 passes, rarity. We are the only studio of its kind to offer popularity. So come see why everyone in Elmhurst is wanting to rush to us, blah, blah, blah. Urgency, hurry before offers expires as is first come, first serve. You have those six points in there, you're already gonna perform better than 90% of the people you're competing against. Now, your ability to write copy in and around that is also very important as well. And your offer is super important. Your offer and your message is, is the most important thing. A lot of, raise your hands if you think marketing and advertising are actually the same thing. And if you don't raise your hands, I'm gonna ask you what the difference is. So raise your hands if you think marketing and advertising are actually the same thing. Okay, they're actually different. So marketing is here. Advertising is one of the pieces within marketing, okay? Mar marketing is everything on this, in this area of the business, outside of operations and all that, right? Marketing is, okay, what's our product mean? What's our buyer persona? Who's the people that we're targeting? What makes them them? What's our packages? What are our packages going to look like? And how are they going to be marketable? What's our value proposition? What's our competitive advantage? What are the things that we do different than anybody else? How do we want to make people feel? Um, what type of a culture do we want to have within our members, right? This is marketing. When you create a marketing plan, all of that's included. Advertising takes everything you've built here and it megaphones it out to the world. That's it. Advertising just shoots it out. So when you see an Old Spice commercial, the ad, the advertisement, is just the Old Spice commercial. The guy, hello ladies, right? You guys remember that guy? So that's the ad. But the fact that they used that guy, the fact that they wanted to target men that wanted to be like funny and tough, the fact that they wanted it to be fresh and unique and almost attract to the millennial, all that stuff, the fact that they use red for their, lo for their logo and all that, that was done in the marketing meeting. And they said, great, we've decided what we want to be to the world. Now, how do we advertise that out? So once you create that stuff, right? You got the targeting down, you got the message down. Now I want uh, Facebook's algorithm to actually do the heavy lifting for you. They'll actually optimize based on the data because they want to make money too. 
And how they make money is by you continue to advertise with them. And so they want you to get what you want. So when you go into Facebook, and you create your ad campaign for the very first time, the very first thing they're gonna ask you to do is, what's your objective? It'll say it right there and you have to select leads or uh, traffic or brand awareness or video views. You have to pick what your objective is. And Facebook is now going to take another tier that you didn't even know they're doing to actually create the perfect demographic. So let's say you said, yes, I want women between 25 and 55 that are within five miles of my area, right? You did that and you selected video views, they're now not only looking for those women that fit that, but they're looking for women that generally watch more videos based on what they do on Facebook. If you would have selected leads, that wouldn't have been in the factor and it would have been people that generally opt into more leads. If you would have selected social engagement, it's people that generally like, comment, and share stuff more than the average. Does that make sense? So there's a whole nother tier that Facebook's actually doing and they're gonna see as long as you're getting what you want out of it, they're gonna continue to optimize and the worst thing you could do to a campaign is start and stop and start and stop and start and stop. Okay? The only time you can start and stop is when you stop an actual like ad, ad set or campaign within the account to start another one. But your account as a whole should be running ads consistently because Facebook will see you as a consistent advertiser, therefore get, deliver you better consistent results because they have tiers. And so let's say you're an advertiser on Facebook, you're an advertiser on Facebook and I'm Facebook. If you're start and stop, you're start and stop and you're always spending and you start spending a little more as time goes on. And now let's say we already hit the pinnacle because keep in mind, you're not the only people advertising to these people. And you're not, forget fitness studios. Hair salons are advertising to these people. Uh, daycares are advertising, martial arts, restaurants, bars. Would you guys agree? Everyone's got the same kind of general target. So you're competing against a lot of people and the ad space on Facebook's pretty much out. So I'm gonna reward you because you helped me build a more sustainable business. You, I can't rely on. All right, let's go into retargeting. Raise your hands high if you understand retargeting. Raise your hands high if you don't. Perfect, okay. Now I'm gonna, add, I'm gonna say something in like 15 seconds and I'm gonna ask you to raise your hands again. Have you guys ever gone on Amazon and let's say you wanted to buy this clicker. You almost checked out, but you decided not to. Then you went anywhere else on the internet and this clicker was there. Raise your hands if that's happened to you. That's retargeting. Now, raise your hands if you understand what retargeting is. Okay, perfect, now everybody does. So retargeting is basically saying, hey, I got somebody that took some sort of an action and that, that means I know that they're more interested than the guy that took zero actions and I don't know anything about. So I wanna continue showing them this because I know that there's a little interest. Would you agree if I got pretty far or if I even went to the, this page on Amazon that my interest in getting a clicker is probably higher than the average person? So would you wanna spend money to show me in an ad or a cold person? Me, right, I'm further down. Because maybe I didn't buy for a million reasons, right? Kid could have started crying, boss came around the corner, phone rang, something could have happened, right? Okay, here we go. So you can say, I want to retarget people that have done any of these things. So let's say anybody that visits my website or my landing pages. Anybody that visits my website or my landing pages, I'm going to place a pixel on. So here's what you do. I want you guys to write this down. Google Facebook custom audiences. Write that down. Google face Facebook custom audiences. So Facebook custom audiences, what you're basically doing is you're saying, okay, I'm going to create a custom audience on Facebook. I'm going to know how to do it because I just Googled it. It's simple. So I'm going to create a custom audience on Facebook. And what this is saying is anybody that's taking a specific action, which I'm going to determine right now in the building of this custom audience, I'm going to be able to run ads to them specifically instead of choosing 25 to 55 year old female all the time. So I can say, you know what? Anybody that visits my website or landing page. So when you're creating the custom audience, they'll show you how to do that by setting up the URL and putting a pixel. They'll give you a pixel. All you have to do is copy it and paste it or give it to your developer and say, hey, paste this here. There's literally instructions for a developer that Google will give you. You can just email, but all developers know what to do with it, okay? So anybody that visits my website or landing page, I want them in this custom audience. Okay, cool, what else? Well, anybody that watches a good percentage of my video. So you can say anybody that watches 10 seconds of my video or 25% of my video, 50% of my video or 95% of my video or 100% of my video, I want them to go in this custom audience. Okay, great. By the way, you could have several custom audiences. So anybody that watches 10 seconds or 75% could be two separate custom audiences, right? But let's just start with basics for right now. Anybody, I would put anybody that watches 10 seconds because the truth is 10 seconds is a lifetime for people today. The average watch time on video is six seconds. Okay, we're like goldfish. So anybody that watches 10 seconds is already more than almost double. It's almost double the average. 
than anybody that engages with my posts or ads on Facebook. So you could say anybody that likes, comments, or shares any of my posts or ads, then I want to go ahead and put them in the custom audience as well. Would you agree that's a person that's some, somewhat interested in your stuff? And lastly, anybody that engages with my page. So maybe they go on your page, they look at pictures, they do whatever, I want them in there too. Okay, so now anybody that took those actions, would you agree that's a warmer audience than going after somebody that's just 25 to 55 within a certain area, yes? So now the cool thing is once you have that custom audience created, you'll name it. You can call it like warm audience, something like that. When you go to boost something on Facebook or on Instagram, how many of you guys have boosted before? Well, now instead of just boosting to a general targeting thing that you set up, you can boost to that custom audience. You'll see when you go to boost it, now because you've created it, it'll show up as an option and you can boost it to that group. So the people that have already engaged and showed interest can see your stuff, more likely to get more engagement. Because you get more engagement, you're gonna actually have better ranking organically. Because you have better ranking organically, you're gonna get more free impressions. Does that make sense? How many of you guys are running ads on YouTube? Not, not uploading YouTube videos, but running ads on YouTube. YouTube ads are like ridiculous, ridiculously cheap. So remember when I told you that Facebook already maxed out on their inventory? YouTube's 70% of the ad space the ad inventory on YouTube remains unsold. So it's like, a, you ever go to the, like we're at a business store and they're like selling everything at like 90% off. So here's the thing with YouTube advertising. It's all about the inventory supply and demand. Right now, it is pretty much at the for sale type price, okay? So there's two different types of ads that I recommend you guys run. One is discovery ads. The other one is in-stream ads. Discovery ads are like if you typed in Facebook ad training at the top, see right there it says ad in that yellow box. That's how you know it's an ad. Much like Google, when you go on Google, they have the paid spots up top, the sponsor spots. So there it is, that right there. And then all these are organic stuff below. So anybody that's researching weight loss that happens to be within two miles of your location or fat loss, and then in-stream ads are the ones that you guys have probably definitely seen, right? Where you go to watch a video, it doesn't matter what video you're looking to watch, but then an ad pops up in front of it. Cool thing is with these in-stream ads, which I like the most, I like both, I like both, but I like, I like in-stream ads at the price point, is that it doesn't matter what you're watching, it has nothing to do with what you can have to do with what you're watching, you can choose that as well, but it has to do with where you've been. So if you've been to my landing page or website, I can place a Google pixel on the where, there, Google owns YouTube, right? So that's how that works. You can also Google how to retarget on YouTube, or, right, same thing. But you could place a pixel on your website and your landing pages, so anybody that visits that, you can run ads to those people on YouTube. Anybody that, let's say, has been searching for stuff like weight loss, now they're searching something like Michael Jordan highlight reel, it doesn't matter, your ad's gonna pop up. Your ad will pop up based on what they've been doing or what they're currently doing. You get to choose or you get to pick both. So, here are the numbers. You don't pay for views. You only pay for true views. Raise your hand if you understand the difference between a view and a true view. Okay, here's the difference. You guys are gonna love this, ready? A true view defined by YouTube is they've watched at least 30 seconds of the video. 30, which is five times longer than the average. And it's six times longer than what they have to watch because they get to skip at what point? Five seconds. So they only charge you if the person watching the video watches 30 seconds or clicks to learn more or watches the whole video because you made your video 29 seconds or less. So what, what's one strategy you already know you should do? 30 seconds or longer, number one, okay? Another really good thing to do too, this is a strategy I learned from Tom Breeze. He's one of the best YouTube ads guys I know. He actually will only create like a 22 second video, but the eight, second, eight nine seconds after is still in the video, but it's just a call to action page. So it tells people what to do next. The reason is because now it's boring and people are like, all right, well, I, get to, I know what to do now, I can just get out now. And they get out before the 30 second mark, so he gets almost all his views for free. Now the caveat to that is, you know, you also are not getting as many conversions, so YouTube may not optimize, so there's pros and cons to it both, but there's a lot of cool strategies that you can do along with it. Another really good one too is always show your logo, always say your company name, what you, where you are and what you do if you can in the first five seconds of certain branding campaigns, because you know they have to watch at least five seconds, so it's a great way to at least get you and your company out for free. Because let's, look, here are the numbers, right, it's crazy. On average, true views can cost two to 10 cents per each. True views. So keep in mind, the people that did watch 30 seconds, that only costs you two to 10 cents. Everyone else is free, okay? On average, views can cost nine tenths of one penny. So that's views, not true views, views. So now you're talking nine tenths of one penny. 
Think about that, like how crazy that is. Nine tenths of one penny to show my video to a targeted person for at least five seconds. He's got to, he can't scroll through unless he doesn't want to watch a video he chose anymore. So for a hundred dollars, you can get 11,000 views. 1,000 to 500 on average will be true views or clicks. For $2,500, 275,000 views or 25,000 uh, or 125,000 views. I say that because it's a range. It's crazy that people aren't doing it. The only reason people aren't doing it is because they haven't taken the time to understand it. I know zero people that have taken the time to understand it and have not done it. Unless they're just not action takers, obviously. That's different. There's people like that too. Okay, so would you like to see two examples? Here's a couple examples. So this is Felicia. This is another franchise we work with called Jabs Boxing. Here's how we created this video. Ladies in Wrigley Park, don't skip this ad. You're gonna wanna hear this. I'm gonna teach you three ways you can start burning fat faster without crazy dieting or dramatically cutting your calories. In fact, that's just gonna make it worse. By the end of this video, you'll also know how to keep that fat off so you don't live on this roller coaster ride on the scale. My name is Felicia with Jabs Boxing, and here at Jabs, we've now helped thousands of women across the country lose tens of thousands of pounds while also adding lean muscle that makes you stronger and look and feel incredible. Okay, so let's dive in. Number one, don't go no carb. This is a huge no-no and has been a terrible rumor spread like wildfire because it does actually get you to lose weight quickly, but kills your metabolism, which means any cheat meals you have later on puts on fat faster, easier, and stays around longer. Number two, sleep. Getting less sleep has been scientifically proven over and over to destroy metabolism and negatively affect your hormones. Getting more sleep will help you lose more fat and recover from workouts better so you can hit it harder on your next workout too. Number three, combat training. Yes, hitting punching bags, speed bags, and guys like Bob over here will increase adrenaline. And because you're not just doing boring sets and reps, your body is burning calories more efficiently and you're increasing your metabolism to keep that fat off even when you're not working out also known as the afterburn. And here at Jabs Boxing, we are offering a free one week pass to come in and work out with us, no strings attached. We offer incredible classes where all workouts are different and it's just for women. Within your first week, you'll see exactly how this type of workout can get you looking and feeling better fast. Within just the first few workouts, you'll get it. You will know why thousands of women are working out this way and avoiding the same old stuff that gets boring and doesn't work as well. So click on the button below to claim your free seven day pass and join us for unlimited workouts during that week. This offer is limited to the first 50 ladies that jump on this offer, so hurry and click on the button quickly and I can't wait to meet you. Did you guys hear all six of those points? Yeah. So Ridley, uh, here's the closing. So we give them time. We don't just close the ad. We want to give them time because otherwise it'll just go to the video that they wanted to watch anyway and they forget about this. So give them time to like get what they need out of this ad before the ad goes away. Some people just end it too quickly. Okay. So that's number one. Number two, this is Ridley Park. Ridley Park um, is still in, in pre-sales. They've already got 300 members. Okay. Now really quick, if you remember the, I'm going to watch, show you just the beginning, the very few seconds because you can see the difference. I A-B test as well. So check this out. Ladies in Wrigley Park, don't skip this ad. You're gonna wanna hear this. I'm gonna teach you three ways you can start burning fat faster without crazy dieting or dramatically Okay, that was way calories. number one. Now here's way number two, okay? You'll see McKenna in this video as well. So we used her in here, ready? Ladies, don't you hate it when you see young girls eating a whole box of pizza and not gaining any weight? Yeah, like that one. You probably just assumed it's because she's younger. Well, kind of. Because she's younger, she is more likely to burn calories off easier because she has a better metabolism. That's it. But having a great metabolism isn't only available to young people. As I'm sure you know, those few people that are older that still somehow eat whatever they want and don't gain as much weight. That's because they too have a great metabolism and you can too. Everything after this is the same as the other one. Okay? So we just basically change up how we're gonna see the first five seconds to see like what gets people to skip or not skip. So we're testing a few different vari uh, variations. Now, if you guys are like, how do I create videos? Like, I don't know if I have the people on my team. Well, hey, that's okay. Um, Canva can help you create thumbnails. You can do that yourself. Upwork or Fiverr, you can hire people to create thumbnails for you and videos for you as well. And that's gonna be really cool too. And you could just tell them like, hey, look, this is the type of video I'm looking for. These are the graphics I'm looking for. Plays like Upwork and Fiverr. I mean, they may charge anywhere from, you know, 25 bucks to 150 bucks a video. You give them the footage and then they edit it and do all the stuff with music and graphics and all that stuff and then they give it to you and it's done. Okay, 
targeting practice, uh, targeting practices. So number one, you could target people by keywords, meaning things that they've searched on Google or YouTube. You could target people by in-market interest, meaning things that they're probably in the market for. So let's say somebody that's been on Google searching for gyms near me, they now Google has can give that data to YouTube because they own YouTube and know that this person's in the market for a gym membership in the market for a gym membership is actually a targeting option. So when you go to YouTube and you select targeting options, it'll say in the market for you click on that. One of them is gym membership. Another one's fitness services. You get like in the market for based on their his search history. Is that pretty cool? Channels, meaning what channels are they watching? So, Hey, I want to target, you know, people in the five mile radius that are following the biggest loser that are following Dr. Oz that are following these type of people, right? Uh, retargeting. So you, same thing, like we talked about, you can place pixels and, and, and run ads to people that have already seen your stuff or have taken certain actions. Now, next one, Instagram retargeting. So this is an actual Instagram uh, feed and this is an Instagram story. Okay. We had the number one fitness studio conference on planet earth. That was my promise. We were going to have the number one fitness studio conference on planet earth. And we had 320 people there. We had a hundred and I don't know how many people that actually on camera said this was the best conference I've ever been to. It was incredible. We had the best fitness studio owners from all over the country and some from outside of the country come in and share their stuff. So this was my ad to promote that conference. Our goal is to have 300 people at this one. We had 320 next, next year. We're having a thousand. If you guys want to know more, go to gsdcon.com. And we also have the number one podcast for the fitness business space It's called GSD show. So you go to GSD show. You can listen to it. You can watch it. I promise you watch it. You'll be like, I feel like I'm watching TV. There's, there's no podcast out like what we're doing. The people we bring on are freaking incredible. Okay. So GSD con, um, this was the ads that we ran to get it. So we had our store, our, our feed ad. So there's our feed ad. And then we also had our story ad. So this is what people would look like when they go on the stories. Now we just came up across a, uh, or we came upon a cool discovery since after creating this presentation. So what I've learned, my team's learned is there is a, actually a strategy that creates results as good as Facebook ads. That's not Facebook ads. And in fact, we've seen it generate leads way lower than Facebook ads. And so now we're bringing it to all of our members, but it's Instagram story ads with polls. So what that means is you create an Instagram story and you just do a story like this. Hey, what's up ladies in Ridley park. We are having a free week for everybody that wants to come in here and work out. We're the only studio that does this, 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 and we have 30 passes available. If you're interested and you want your pass, go ahead and swipe up and we'll see you there. Say so swipe up and they can get the access, but before they get access, before they swipe up throughout the entire message, there's the polls. You know how people have polls and you can pick yes or no, or whatever the options are. You select you, the options you create are, um, claim offer or learn more. <laughs> both of them create a lead, right? So those are the options they pick. So now there's actually three ways they can take action, claim offer, learn more or swipe up. We've seen leads in for an orange theory that we weren't able to break $20 per lead on Facebook for 70 cents a lead, like a lot of leads. <laughs> so Instagram story ads are really good. In many cases, we see Instagram targeting ads converting worse than Facebook on the feed. Okay. In many cases, we see Instagram retargeting ads, retargeting. So the difference is one's targeting, one's retargeting, converting better on Facebook. So it seems based on the feed ads that Facebook actually converts better on the targeting side and Instagram converts better on the retargeting side. Now Facebook owns Instagram. So you actually create Instagram ads inside the Facebook platform. So when you're creating an ad, you just select if you want it to be on Instagram or Facebook or both. I always select one or the other because the ad formats, like the images and everything are just a little slightly different and the way you create the copy. So you want to create them unique, separate from each other, even though it's easy to just check a box. Okay. So now when they go to the landing page, remember that video I showed you, this would be an example of the landing page you would go to. Remember all you do is sell the offer. You don't sell the workout. So limited offer free seven day pass. We're thrilled to announce our newest jobs boxing location, really park. We're offering the first 50 women in the area to come work out for a free seven days, claim my free seven day pass and they go ahead and pick from there. So thanks for checking out our free seven day pass offer. Now this is the next page, next video. I'll tell you how to get yours. First, I want you to know what comes with your seven day pass. You're going to have unlimited access to all of our classes throughout the week. You're with us. There are no strings. See to only selling that week. To see what jabs is all about. So more people in your community can know what we do and why it works so well. Jazz boxing as a whole has now helped thousands of women get stronger and leaner over the years and is now taking our city by storm. Over 150 ladies have already joined us and I want you to see why again. There's no strong pitch to buy. 
All we ask is if you have a great time and a great workout, you tell friends about your experience so they can know about jabs too. Okay, so here's how to get your pass. On this page, you'll notice a pink button to claim your pass. Click on it and tell me who you are and where I should send this pass. Be very clear as to what you want them to do. I, someone from our awesome team will reach out to you to share the class time so you can find a class that's convenient for you. This that's is cool it. too. So click on that pink button and get started. I can't wait to see you here. Um, and then when they opt in, this is the thank you page. You made it, and I've already emailed you your free seven day pass. And if you haven't gotten a text or call from one of our JABS team members yet, don't worry, they'll be reaching out soon. So keep a lookout for a number that you may not have saved in your phone. That's important also, because people ignore numbers that they, they don't recognize. Yet. So if you can't make it in today, don't worry. It won't activate until your first day with us, but you will have to schedule your first class within seven days of today. So hurry and schedule soon. You can also reach out to us if you'd like to just schedule it now and get locked in by calling or texting at the number below. On your first workout, we'll have a nice cold bottle of water waiting for you and a senior instructor there to make sure you know how the class works so you don't feel intimidated or out of place. Our goal is for you to have an incredible experience we'll here at Jazz. And our team so now we have the A-B test. So we actually, in, how many of you guys have a ClickFunnels account? Okay, the best piece of software that you guys can get in your business right now for running ads, the cheapest thing that will deliver the most returns is a ClickFunnels account. Just go to clickfunnelspromo.com. You'll get a 14-day free trial as well, so you can test it out. So if you don't want it, you don't have to get it. But clickfunnelspromo.com. So when you go there, you sign up, you get a 14-day uh, trial. But the cool thing is you can do like this. So you create your landing page up here, then you can create your thank you page, and they give you templates. So all you have to do is like change your stuff. It's super simple. They have fitness templates already. In fact, ours was based off of one. And then you could A-B test. So the only difference between this one and this one, because you only want to A-B test one variable at a time. The only difference here is here, you have to click the button to be able to fill out the form. Here are the forms right there. All right, that's it. That's all we wanted to test in this particular example. Once we find out what the winner is, which it'll tell you, see we got 50% of the traffic going here and here. In the stats, it'll tell you, you see a winner, you can go ahead and pause one or delete it, and then you can now make the two variables that we're winning the same, and now go ahead and change something else. You just keep doing that. It's like, it's like you know, if you're a coach of a basketball team, like who subs, who comes in? The higher performing one stays on the court, everyone else gets on the bench, and then you put new people in. Okay, message or marketing, chatbots. If you guys aren't using this, this is incredible. Chatbots are nuts. Okay, so uh, basically what chatbots are, it's like if you ever get a message on Facebook, that's using Messenger and you can use ManyChat, which is the platform that helps you create these messages in order to do that. So like when somebody goes to Jabs Boxing, you can create like where a message automatically pops up as soon as they go to the landing page with different options. Um, on top of that, you could put it on your website. So that's actually a free chat feature. You can see that's the Messenger icon from Facebook and you can make it whatever color you want. So I made it match our GSD con page and then you can make it so it's automated. So when somebody opts in, it asks them a question. If they say this, now this automatically pops up and you can literally get people to schedule themselves. This is great and I'll show you a couple reasons why. Here are the stats. Email on average in this industry has a 34% open rate. That means only 34% of the emails you send are actually being opened with a 2% click-through rate. That means if you have links in those emails, only 2% are actually getting clicked. Text has a 96% open rate with a 42% click-through rate. Much better, okay? Chatbots have an 84% open rate, not as good as text, but a 72% click-through rate, significantly better than text, okay? Because they're in a platform where they're clicking and checking things out already. That's where they're native, it's easy, it's, it's better. So I really like Messenger. And then just like with email, you can have a list and you can just keep messaging people that have opted into your list. In fact, if they go to message you at all, that automatically opts them in. Just by saying hi or anything, that opts them in. Now they're in your list and you continue to message them for free and that's where you can get free traffic instead of always paying for it all the time. There's three ways to increase revenue. Get more customers, increase your prices, or sell more to your customers. That's pretty much it. That's where it comes down to. A lack of certainty will prevent some from joining or continuing a membership. That's it. That's, there's two reasons people don't buy. They're not the decision maker or they're not certain it's gonna work. If they're certain it's gonna work and they have the means to make a decision, they're gonna buy things that sometimes are even irrational to purchase. You should be running ads to your existing customers at all times with proof that it'll create certainty in what you do. A lot of people only run ads to people that they wanna become customers. You should always be running ads to your customers as well. And there's a reason for it. So like for us, we run ads to our customers as well. How many of you guys have how many of you guys would like to improve your retention? Raise your hands if yes. Okay, so here's the thing. 
When it comes to retention, sometimes people think it's them, sometimes people think it's a studio, or it's a fitness, or it's so many other reasons. What we've learned, not only with our studios, but with ourselves as well, is when you're constantly showing stories of the other members that are getting really great results within your program, it starts to create at least certainty in their mind that this does work. I just am not doing my part. Right? Because I can see all these other people. Every time I log into Facebook, this guy from, the, from our studio, this guy, this guy, this guy, this girl, this girl, this girl, everyone's getting these great results. So I'm more bought in that it actually does work. I'm just not doing my part. But if they don't see that, then they test something else. Let me test what else works. Can you guys see that happening? Yes? So running as your existing customers is not only good, but it's much more affordable because it's a custom audience. You have less members, so you're probably going to spend maybe $5 to $15 a month to advertise your existing customers. It's super, super cheap, but now that helps your retention. Find ways to help your customers buy what they're already buying somewhere else. Supplements are a great example. If you guys aren't selling supplements, definitely want to sell supplements. Uh, Frank Nash, I mean, you guys saw Frank speak, and I think he got one more time. He is awesome, one of my favorite people in the space. He does an incredible job. Uh, numbers I've seen from Frank, 300,000 in sales through his supplements, 150K in commissions. So you're talking, that's equivalent. If, you're, if you charge $150 a month, that's equivalent to 1,000 payments a year to your studio, but you didn't have any overhead for it. It's equivalent to 83.33 customers that paid you per month at 150 a month for 12 straight months, right? McDonald's doesn't make money off the burgers, they make money off the fries and the shake. That's where the margins really lie. The burgers get people to come in, the fries and shake is where the margins are. So it's great that you get people coming in for the, for the monthly memberships, that's what they come in for. But once you start helping them with all the other stuff, that's where you really create the margins. You get your value per customer to come up, you don't need as many customers before you run out of space. You see what I'm saying? Maximize your customers before you maximize your space. Try.fit.com, that's, that's the URL, you go there, you get some cool stuff from there as well. And then virtual training. So. For us, we do the same thing, right? We've got all these things. We know what our customers want. Our customers, our members, they want to grow their fitness studios, period. So we got people even like Perform Better. I see Chris back there. What's up, Chris? We got people like Perform Better as people that we recommend because we know they're good, right? We've got people like Dofit because we know they're good. We've got, we've got people that are actually, you know, um, that are really good at what they do. And we got 40 or 50 partners in there that we recommend our studios and then we're able to get affiliate commission. So every time you saw those URLs up on, on screen, yes, you not only will get those trials and those discounts and those deals that we've negotiated, but in return, we will get an affiliate commission off of. Why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I get a commission if I sold it? Why wouldn't you get a commission? Why would you send people to Amazon? Just sell it, get commission off of it, okay? So in our virtual training, we have a ton of stuff in our training center. We, we not only offer great areas, but we also teach you stuff. You guys can teach your members how to be better in and outside of your program. So for us, yes, I told you how important sales training was. Raise your hand if you agreed with me on the sales and how important it was. So we offer sales training. Not only do we do offer great sales training by me, but we offer, offer great sales training by some of the most successful studios all over the country. Yeah, I mean, most of them are seven-figure studios and have several studios. The guy that most recently had uh, seven-figure seven Orange Theory Fitnesses, one of them in a very difficult location to close at. One guy's got eight locations, five more seven figures, three just opened, right? And so the people that are coming in are just incredible. In our program, we actually teach you how to do Facebook ads step by step from the moment that you log in all the way to you run your ad and you get results from it. We teach you how to do Instagram ads. We teach you how to do YouTube ads, landing pages, like through the click funnels I showed you, messenger marketing, sales, marketing, PR. I can show you how to get on TV four to six times per month. Not me, but the girl that actually gets on TV four to six times per month for the last four years. I'll show you how to get your, uh, your HR better, your retention better, financials, CRM, text, email, software, vendors, all these people in the marketplace, and all these people are the best in the best in the industry that we fly into our, into our uh, office to actually create this content for you and with me. Does that make sense? Big round of applause for Chris and everybody that put this thing together. Thank you guys for you guys for being here the whole time. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you like this episode, make sure you subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, Google Play, or YouTube. And to watch more episodes and get exclusive links from each episode, go to gsdshow.com. Again, that's gsdshow.com.